I woke up this morning to another consequence of the PACT Act, a.k.a. the vape mail ban. We've lost so many people and fantastic companies along the way. And no, I'm not talking about Rip Trippers or Jay Hayes. I'm talking about Vape Wild, The Sauce LA, River Supply, and now, added to the list, is MyFreedomSmokes.com. Once again, the explanation is the same as it was for those who've already thrown in the towel. So without further ado, ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Action. This is Vape Wild. Oh, hello. hello. We're Vape, Vape Wild. Wild. And we take, we take vaping, vaping very, very seriously. seriously. Yeah, they took vaping seriously. So they got bought out and quit. The Sauce LA. They threw in the towel. They spent all the money they needed to to get their PMTA stuff filed. And then they threw in the towel. Just recently, River Supply announced they're done selling to the public. If you're a shop, you can still order from them. But the general consumer, sorry. They're going to be closing up once their uh, big selection of inventory is all gone. 50% off all products while supplies last. And now... I wake up this morning, open my email, and here's what I got from My Freedom Smokes. This is the company that originally got me to be able to DIY, to get my foot in the door. Well, let's take a look at the email. Due to ongoing compliance requirements and new regulations of the e-cigarette industry, it has become nearly impossible for a shop like My Freedom Smokes to function without turning into something completely different. This was never the goal for My Freedom Smokes, as we always prided ourselves in being able to offer customized products and service at great prices. So unfortunately, we will be shutting our doors at the end of the month. 20% off everything. Here's their coupon code. And if you ordered stuff from My Freedom Smokes, now's the time to get it while they still have it. Looking at the email, I think that their actual brick and mortar location is going to continue operating after this. But no more online sales for us adults that need to purchase supplies for a journey away from deadly combustible tobacco. Yeah. Internet archives are gonna be the only place you'll be able to get to see what uh, My Freedom Smokes used to have. That's where I used to be able to get the, co the coils from my uh, Aspire Odin. And they had them for the cheapest price. Eight bucks for a box of coils. You buy that, some flavoring and some supplies, you're good to go. Well, scratch this one off the list of places where you can get stuff from. And who can we thank for this? Well, our lovely politicians and the enforcement of regulations that were passed in the omnibus bill and are part of the PMTA process because the FDA finally got around to posting and publishing an update to the PMTA list. So now, enforcement agencies, as well as all the shops out there, can now go and find out if the products they have on the shelves are legal for sale in the United States. So, what products are on this list? Well, considering there's over 4 million products, every single one of these links opens up a comma-separated file with over 400, sometimes over 430,000 products. 
in a single file, and there's 15 of them for you to dig through to see what products are legal for sale in the United States. And looking at some of these lists that I've clicked on and opened up, there is a crap ton of juice listed in there. But when I looked on there to find out what vendors of hardware have submitted timely applications to be legally sold in the United States, there are very few companies that I've been able to find so far. Inikin, Smock, S'more, Vaporesso, and a bunch of disposable companies, companies that were making disposable products. But I have a feeling that the list of products that are legal for sale in this country has just gotten a lot smaller. And people have started to figure out which companies did what it had to to keep selling products in the United States and which companies said, we'll just sell over the rest of the world. We don't need to sell in the United States. Or we're not going to gamble the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it takes to do the lab works and do the legal paperwork to submit these applications. We're going to sit back and wait and see if somebody actually gets approved because there's a lot of companies, a lot of people out there that don't have a lot of faith in the United States government being able to do the right thing, considering all the propaganda that is being pushed out there. So they're just sitting back and waiting it out. We'll see what happens. If the FDA approves products, well, then we'll submit the paperwork and we'll do the lab fees and we'll do what we have to because there's a chance of us actually being able to continue selling the products. But the Sauce LA, Sean learned the hard way. He filed the, the, the paperwork and he submitted documents and he did lab work for his products to be sold. And then because of the vape mail ban, he didn't have enough of a customer base left to continue operating until the FDA gets around to actually processing the applications. So there goes another company lost along the way. If this doesn't get you to become an advocate, and this doesn't get you to make sure you've got enough of these products laying around to keep on vaping while the FDA gets around to processing these applications, then I don't know what will. That's it for me. Thanks for watching and have a great day.